Exodus 21 says, And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is under the water under the heaven. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. Would you not agree, church, that Adam worshipped Eve? Now I'm going to prove this to you. How did Adam worship Eve? Because God, when Eve was deceived, she didn't know no bear, poor thing. And Eve willingly sinned to have that woman. That's what he did. Now, do you believe he made a mistake, Wayne? Well, no, Jesus, Adam was willing to die for Eve. Jesus died for you, his wife. So th this is a, and then Cain worshiped himself. He felt he was more righteous than God. Egypt worshiped idols and Pharaoh and the Hebrew slaves worshiped comfort from their slave masters. You're saying, well, Wayne, that's not possible. What did they constantly try out when they were out, out in the wilderness? Why didn't you leave us in Egypt? We remember the leeks and the onions and the broth of abomination that was in Egypt. We didn't have to wait on God for nothing. And so they worshipped their bondage. Is that not hard to believe? That somebody be in slavery 430 years and literally wants to go right back to it. Now we know that when they got into the wilderness to prove to you how much they love to worship idols, Moses has only gone 40 days. The preacher has only gone 40 days. The assistant pastor is down there and they say, hey, let's build us an image. And Aaron himself, the second in charge, built an image of a calf. Now you don't learn to the New Testament that they not only worshiped that idol, but they engaged in adultery. But basically, when they come down the hill, I'm sorry, church, I know there's no kids in here, so I can tell you the truth, they were having an orgy. <laughs> you can't make this up. That's what all theologians say. They come down the hill. All the people were naked. Remember that? So they were naked. Running around, getting ready to offer up sacrifices to a bull made with your own hands. Balaam was a man of God. He, 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 he had a gift. He had a gift, church. If you remember Balaam, and this is obscure, a lot of people don't remember the story of Balaam, but Balaam was a preacher that Balak wanted him to curse the children of Israel when they were coming through the wilderness. And so the man of God goes, well, let me go ask God. So he goes to God and God goes, you will not curse my people, Balaam. Now, why was he willing to do this? Because he worshiped money. He worshiped honor. He worshiped position. Because if you remember, King Balak said, look, we'll give you great honor. I'm going to give you a bunch of money if you'll curse the children of Israel. And that's what he did. And he died with the heathen. Samson worshiped God, did he not? Did Samson not worship God? But one thing else he worshiped, wild women. I'm sorry, church. You'll see this a lot. Wild women. He loved the heathen women. He didn't want a meek and good woman. He wanted somebody that was promiscuous and wild. And it cost him his eyes. And he did not figure out what was wrong with him till he could no longer see and to get himself right with God. Am I preaching the truth so far? Did not Saul worship his kingship in honor of him of others to himself? Saul was the type of guy that was little in his own eyes and as soon as he got some power, as soon as he got some position, he started idolizing myself. I, I lied this position. I like this. I'm going to show people that how great I am. And even when he sinned against God, what did he tell the preacher? He said, preacher, honor me before these people. Honor me because it's all about me. No, it's all about him, church. 
Now let's look at Solomon. Solomon worshipped women, money, opulence, which led to idolatry and human sacrifice. You can't make this up. You're saying, how is this possible for Solomon himself who has spoken to God because idolatry sets in us quickly? I want you to understand I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching with you because I've had this same problem. Now, you don't have to raise your hand and say if you've ever did this, but God always makes me preach naked. He wants me to tell you my faults. I've had idolatry in my own personal life. You're saying, well, what was that idolatry? Well, how about your wife? How about the idolatry of my business? How about the idolatry of saying, what do you do for a living? Hey, I own a business. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Don't you think something to me? That's idolatry. Are you with me? It's idolatry. You're saying, gosh, Wayne, you're harsh on yourself. Well, let's just tell the truth. It is the truth. It is greatest to be servant, not master. And that is idolatry. Did not Ahab worship sex? He was married to one of the worst women on planet earth, Jezebel. Remember that? You know, she, to this day, is a byword for bad women, Jezebel. But Jezebel just let him do whatever he wanted to do. And so they would bring all the prostitutes in and they would do whatever they wanted to do and it cost him his soul. The Pharisees worshiped tradition and their buildings. Well, what about questioning miracles for a known man of God? They didn't even believe John the Baptist was sent from God. They didn't believe Jesus was from God. They didn't believe any apostles were from God. If you didn't do it according to the way they said it should be done, then it shouldn't be done at all, they said. It's the Sabbath day. You're not allowed to work today. Here's somebody who's been suffering forever. Idolatry. Judas worshipped money. Didn't he not? Was he not in the presence with the Lord for three and a half years? And what did he worship? Money. Now, some of you are saying, but we don't worship idols today. You know, we don't do that. But we actually, we do. And I'm going to get through this so I can finally preach. The Greeks and the Romans worshiped false gods after Christ died, didn't they? Now you're saying, wait, why are you preaching this to us? We don't do this. Church, because you're getting ready to see stuff that's going to blow your mind. They are doing it. You just don't know about it. They are worshiping trees. You don't know what they're doing. Because they're not telling you what they're doing. Why? I have to hear about it. I don't know. But I know people right now, my family, their friends are worshiping trees. They're worshiping the star. They're worshiping the sky. They're worshiping everything but Jesus Christ. This is going to be a serious problem. And if you haven't seen it, you've seen this your whole life, haven't you? Haven't you seen this your whole life? Where they worship their business. I did that. I did that. Amen. You're saying, well, that's just being proud. But the Bible says not to do that either. These are idols that we set up, don't we? How about idolizing your children? You've got to be careful of this. Because anything what becomes an idol when you're willing to disobey God to satisfy the wants or needs of someone or something in your life. Uh-oh, boy, that, that was not pretty there. But that's the truth. God had to show me what was going wrong. God had to show me what was in my heart. And I will tell you something right now. God will not tolerate church from anybody or anything. I'm not saying you're doing this. Anything in your heart besides Him. You cannot love anyone. I'm going to prove this to you. Let me cover this real quick. Do you know the Hindus worship everything? <laughs> I think Indians are good people. They really do. I, I've known a lot of them. They have some good, I bet a bunch of you have a bunch of doctors that are Hindu. And they're good people. They're not, but they worship everything, church. And they were, they're experiencing the worst flooding and natural disasters in history. And I'm not condemning them, but don't worship a cow and you won't starve to death, okay? <laughs> That's all I'm saying to you. God says not to do this. This cow's not your God. A fly, 
Oh, we, work, we don't kill flies. That might be me. Lord, get out of there. Get, get away from that. I don't want to come back as no fly. I don't want nothing to do with it. I don't want to come back as a cow. Do you want to come back as a cow? This is idolatry. Now we have some church people. Well, let me cover this first. <laughs> I hate to say this. It's super offensive. Don't the Muslims go to Mecca and, and worship a cube? <laughs> a cube, church. They go around the cube and worship. Is there no God in heaven? I feel like Elijah want to stand up. Is there no God in heaven that you have turned to worship in cubes, carrying wands, worshiping trees? Where, listen, I'm an outdoorsman. I love being outdoors. I think God made that for us to play in. Can I get an amen on that? I love it. But I ain't worshiping no tree. I worship the creator. Who's the creator? Christ Jesus. I don't worship the creation. Does that mean we don't love people? No, that doesn't mean that. It's not what he's saying. I've said to this to you for four weeks in a row now. And this is so important, church, even though you think it might not be. Because the things that are going to be happening on the earth, you're going to have to make sense. When they start setting their idols up and their statues and start bowing down and worshiping it, you're going to have to say something. And you're saying, Brent Wayne, church people are not worshiping anything, really. Do not church people worship idols? Do they not bow down and worship statues? Do they not bow down and worship the leaders? I mean, if a statue has something weird happen to it, it becomes a relic for the church. Now you guys know, over a year ago, they brought a statue around here that it wept sometime in the 1930s or 40s. Can you remember what year it was? Remember that? And this whole area went whoring after that idol. I was disgusted. I said, God, let me burn it down and tear it down. I'll grind it to powder and I'll serve it to them to drink. Why? Because I don't want the Lord to be offended. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? You're saying, Wayne, you love the wrath of God. No, I don't want to offend him. He's done a lot for me. I don't want to hurt his feelings. A lot of people think God doesn't have no feelings. He has feelings. Did you know that? He has feelings. I don't want to hurt his feelings. A lot of you have done a lot for a lot of people and they've trampled you under their feet. How'd that feel? Did that feel good? Did you like that? You want to have that happen all the time? No, and God's the same way. We're made in His image and likeness. Jesus says, if you don't come to me and hate your father, mother, wife, children, brother, sister, yes, and your own self, you cannot be my disciple. Is that what He says? Am I reading it? Do you think Jesus meant that when He said that in Luke 14, 26? I think that's what He meant. You're saying, well, Wayne, I'm not, I don't want to hate my wife. No, you're to love your wife and be willing to die for her as Christ loved the church. Is that not what the word says? But in comparison, this is a comparison. You, your love for your spouse or your children must be equivalent to hate compared to the love you have for him. Amen? That's what he says here. Okay. All right, 2 Timothy says this, and I've read this to you two times before, but I'm going to discuss it one more time. In the very last days, people will be in love with themselves. Now you think, well, this is crazy. How many seen this where they're standing in front of the mirror all the time? <laughs> I'm going to make a bunch of you mad. I just love selfies. Every time I see that, I'm like, that is not good. That's not good. I know everybody wants to look good. Don't shoot the messenger. But look, some of this is not good. How about lovers of money? See, women will get the selfie. Okay, Wayne just picked on the women because they like to do the selfie. Look, I'm out here doing something. All right, great. But men, I'm going to get you too because you're in love with money, position, and power. You're in love with that. Don't we do that sometimes? I'm not saying to us, but generally speaking, that is a devil that I've had to fight. I've got to be somebody. I've got to prove something to somebody. 
Amen? I'm not getting many amens. I'm getting a couple people shaking their head. So they become mammon idolizers, boasters, personal accomplishment idolizers. Proud, self blast is self. It's all about self. Blaspheming God. I don't need God. I got myself. Don't you? How many? I know most of us in here have physical infirmities, right? You know, so we, we don't take pride in ourselves. I remember when I first got sick at 30 years old, I thought, my gosh, I can't believe how bad I feel. And then, of course, the older people would say, now you know how we feel. Yeah, I guess I do now. I didn't want to know that at this age. The doctor even told me, you got old man disease. He goes, you're awful young for that. He goes, go home, do what you got to do now. Ten years, you'll be in a wheelchair. I told you that before. What about disobedient to their parents where the children think they know more than their elders? Hey, you can't make that up. How many sees that? I see that every day. As I said a couple weeks ago, it's Absalom's generation. Absalom thought he knew more than his dad, knew more than the elders, knew more than everybody. When was the last time you had somebody young calling you on the phone to get advice from you? I get it from my daughters, I will have to admit, they do call and get advice, but the other young people that know me, they never call and get advice. Except I had one one time about 10 years ago called and said, hey, I'm going to start a business. I said, well, that's great. He goes, well, at my age, knowing the amount of money I've got, what would you do? I said, I would get a lot more. So that's all the money you got. And I said, I made a lot of money with this. Cutting grass and shoveling snow. I said, if you go around and you at a reasonable price cut people's grass and shovel snow, that guy never talked to me again. Because he just wanted the position. Are you with me? A lot of people love position. They don't want the responsibility. It's a different message. And I'm going to close with this. And it says the rest of mankind were not killed by plagues. Remember, we studied this Revelation in 9. We've already went through this. And they were not killed by the plagues. They did not, but they did not repent of the or worship of the works of their hands. Yeah, we see that today. Worshiping the works of your hands. And they don't, what, what is the work of their hands? They worship their cars, their houses. They worship their church buildings. Now I love church, I love having a building. I don't like to have church without a building. I'm sorry, that's just me. We could have church at home, couldn't we? We have church at home. We can have church at home. You guys know, I like having a building. I like it's neutral. I like it because you can get a lot of people in here and we can do other stuff, right? I like that. But we can't worship the building. We can't, and I know this church don't do that, but do some people worship their church building? I had a guy with a church with 30,000 people in it. 30,000 members. And he said the last survey... And I think you heard this too. 43% of the people went to the church because they just think his building is wonderful. Golly, people. We can't go to church because our building's wonderful. I'm fixing stuff up back here. But I tell you right now, just for, just for the... I'm sorry. For the carnal people a little bit, I think it should look nice. There ain't nothing wrong. I believe in doing everything that you possibly can for God. I, well, I don't like doing half doing stuff. I'm working for Jesus now. But you can't make that building your idol. What about monuments, positions, titles, lands? Or how about this? I'm doctor. I'm reverend. I'm, uh oh, no one wants to touch on that. You want to irritate me, call me reverend. That will irritate me. There, I'm no reverend, okay? I, I can preach. God gave me that gift. The only one you're to revere is Jesus. Now, I know we've said that for years, but the word itself causes me to cringe because all glory goes to Him. I'll be dead tomorrow. You still need Him. I'm here doing this. That's what I'm doing. It's Him. <laughs> and how about this? He, Jesus says this. Revelation again. And they should not worship demons. You're saying, well, who worship demons? Well, if you're worshiping rock stars, pop stars, country stars, TV stars, movie stars, sports, and evil people, 
I've never seen so many church people have respect for evil people. I, somebody one time went through some kind of issue in their life, shaved their head and all this, and they kept going on and on and on. I'm off of this. I'm off of this. And my shop was inundated with it. And finally one day I stopped and said, I don't want to hear another word. I said, this person has never served a single person but their self their entire life. Why are you so concerned with them? I go, do they feed the homeless? Well, no. Do they take care of the poor? No. Do they take care of elderly? No. Do they, are they preaching the gospel? Well, no. I go, then why is this 30 days on television? Think about that. That's an idol. An idol. And it says here that they do not repent of idols of gold. And they neither see nor hear nor want. This is Revelation, church. This ain't the Old Testament. And they did not repent of their murders or sorcery. Sometimes I'll discuss what that is. Or sexual immorality. This generation loves sex. I'm sorry, church. I know that's offensive. And 20 years ago, I never even said the word in the pulpit. But you know they worship sex. Obsessed with it. I've never seen anything so insane in my life. Instead of it being a sacred thing, they've turned it into something to be. So idolatry, and I've got three months, idolatry easily besets us all. And once the Lord started showing me, and He's been showing me this for 10 years, it's not that He doesn't love us, but what happens is this stuff slowly creeps into our life. And I'll tell you why. And you all going to know why. It is soon as we move away from God and stop spending time with Him and stop spending time in the Word and stop thinking about Him through the day, an idol will come into your life. Because you got to have something to worship. Amen? you got to have something to worship. 